Breast lift is one of the most common procedures that I perform. Most women simply just from aging or gravity or pregnancy or hormonal fluctuation uh, do eventually get saggy at some point. Um, some do lose some volume and then some women start out large breasted and want to be smaller. When I meet with an individual with a woman, I usually start by asking what cup size they are and what uh, cup size goals they may have. Although there's no standardization of broad cup sizes, it's helpful to determine a woman's goals. When we do a breast lift, everything ends up being above the inframammary crease, and the inframammary crease is the fold under the breasts. When we do a breast lift, everything's above the crease. Keep in mind, the final contours are quite natural, and natural breasts are teardrop shaped, and they're a little bit flatter at the upper pole. How much lift I get really determines, um, or is based on a woman's anatomy. So for example, if a woman has a low crease, and we do a breast lift, her breast mound is going to be fairly low. There's not a good way to really alter a woman's crease. If a woman has a higher crease on her on her chest or on her trunk, and we do a breast lift, she will have a high breast mound. And so everybody's a little bit different. Um, everyone has asymmetry to various degrees, so there is never going to be any such thing as perfect symmetry. When we do a breast lift, there are scars as the trade-off. There's really no other good way to do a breast lift without tightening up the skin and without raising the nipple areolar complex. And so as a result of that maneuver, there's gonna be scarring on the breast. And the scars are typically around the areola and then they're down the lower half of the breast and underneath the inframammary crease. Women get real nervous about that vertical limb scar, which is going right down the center of the breast, but that scar usually does fade the best over time. And so it ends up healing well and becoming a little bit less perceptible, certainly at a year. Everybody heals quite differently. So at first the scars are very noticeable. Um, it takes a minimum of a year for them to start to fade to normal skin tone, but women heal differently in a different rate. So I can never give any woman a guarantee. Most women heal, heal quite well and they don't regret doing this surgery. Uh, but some women do take longer to heal. And so it's just about being patient and realizing that that will be a trade-off. But it's, it's usually worth the trade-off. As far as cup size, so there's a way to do a breast lift and really not change the cup size. So there's a very common misconception out there that if I have, if I have a breast lift, I'm gonna go down and broad cup size. And that's not necessarily the case. Certainly if I don't take any tissue away, I can shave the skin and tuck it and use it for volume. And so that tissue is preserved. So a woman may stay close to within her current breast cup size. But keep in mind when we do a breast lift, everything gets higher and kind of tighter and closer to the chest wall. So if a woman is in between bra cup sizes, she could potentially go down a little bit. Some women wanna be bigger and some women wanna be smaller. If a woman has a desire to be smaller breasted, it's quite simple and straightforward at the same time to do a reduction and take some tissue away to decrease that bra cup size. And alternatively, if a woman wants to be larger, an implant can be added at the same time and that'll typically go under the muscle. So if a woman has a goal to be much larger breasted, uh, an implant can be done at the same time. But overall, it's uh, one of the most popular procedures that I do and has a very, very high rate of patient satisfaction.